Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, uh, my name is Dave Eisensetter. I'm the editor of the Valley Advocate, and welcome to our Valley Advocate Podcast. I'm here with our arts editor, Gina Beavers, and we're going to be talking to a, a guest today. Why don't you talk a little bit about it? Uh, yes, we got? we're going to speak with an absolutely fabulous artist. His name is Ima Ime. He is a professor at Westfield State University. Uh, I could go into exactly what you do, but I don't remember. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll save that for a minute. But he's an incredible artist. I did a review on uh, his show up at Deerfield Gallery at the Von Osberg Gallery. Um, and I met him that day for the first time, and it was just a fabulous thing. And so we thought we'd bring him in, and he was also on uh, a part of our cover story on our Bleep Hole Countries yeah, it's right. it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, article. Um, yeah, we, we talked to some folks uh, from shithole countries, as our president would call them, um, uh, to show how there really are important uh, people making important contributions from Africa, from Haiti, from El Salvador, and, uh, and Ima is one of them. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. So remind me, what is it that you do at Westfield State? Well, uh, I, uh, uh, I, I'm a professor of art and art history at Westfield State University, and uh, I've been there, to, I'm in my eighth year there now, and uh, I teach primarily art history, um, very specifically a general survey course, and then I deal with um, the arts of Africa and the African diaspora, African American art, um, Afro-Caribbean, and so on and so forth. And so um, I'm exploring more studio-like courses and special, um, special arrangements with students that allow me to work as an artist at Westfield, but it's still very new to me. I enjoy dealing with the art history, um, even as a practicing artist. I'd love he to hear how you put together your um, Forgotten Girls series, or I guess it's a series of series. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, you know, I just know it from from Gina's piece. I haven't seen uh, except for some of the um, the pieces that we ran. But um, I'd love just to hear kind of how you thought this up and and kind of how you went about uh, it, doing it. It started. It started at Westfield State University. I uh, I was working on a. I was building my African American art course. I was rebuilding it, uh, my African American art course, and I, uh, you know, as you're doing research on things, you run across things in your field that you've seen before, but you don't pay attention to. And one of the things that I'd seen before, but decided to pay more attention to this time, was um, a 1907 um, uh, publication, a children's book titled Ten Little Nigger Girls." And there was a compliment to that title, Ten Little Nigger Boys." Um, I don't know which one came first. Same author. Um, who wrote and illustrated this um, horrendous text? Mm -hmm. um, and the nurse—it's a nursery rhyme. We know it's for children, and and the, a cast of black girls is uh, um, slowly eliminated one by one. Um, the girls are killed off or married off or something else, and it really is a way of poking fun at little black children and perhaps real traumas of little black children, but then also fantastical traumas, like large birds of prey coming and sweeping them away. And um, But little white kids would be reading this mm -hmm. <laughs> as accounting, learning how to count. Um, the, the stories themselves, um, the nursery rhyme is based off of a um, 1968 minstrel song titled uh, ten Little Indians, mm -hmm. um, and you probably know the qu one little, two, little, three, little Indians, four, there are derivations of this, there are children's books now called Ten Little Monkeys, and it's part of our social fabric. This story hasn't gone away, even though the word nigger has been eradicated from public space right. for the most part. Um, it's frowned upon, but the sentiments behind the story is, is very, still very much a part of our, our culture. And I wanted to retell this story. The historian in me wanted to discuss it, and the artist in me wanted to discuss it. And so I found a way to do both. And with this series, Ten Little Nigger Girls, um, and that is one part of the Forgotten Girls series. The other part is the um, the uh, an address uh, addressing the um, recently uh, 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 the recently abducted. Um, 
Chibok girls, um, girls from Chibok, Nigeria. Um, in 2014, you've probably heard about the mass con the mass abduction of these girls by the terrorist organization known as Boko Haram. And um, and so what I wanted to do was just call a little more attention to these girls as girls that were once in social media and mm -hmm. and were very much alive. And even Michelle Obama and everybody was talking about them. And then it just kind of disappeared um, because somehow. It happened far away and it's distant right. and it's not really here, but you still have all these girls that are missing. being raped, that now have their own children that are dead, um, that are still missing in the forests. And of, the ones um, that have returned are alienated and right. marginalized. And marginalized, right, because right. Because they're considered terrorists. Exactly. It is a, it's a story that can go on. Um, even as I've been working on this series, as people would ask me, like, well, what are you going to, I'm doing, sorry, I didn't explain the series. The series is one image per girl. And because there's so many of them, 276, I've just segmented the girls into chapters at this point to deal with um, this various aspects of their disappearance, but their lives, but also the possibility that their presence in this forest of captivity is maybe even changing the space they're in. Maybe they're having a bigger impact on the space than the, than the terrible impacts that the space may be having on them. And so it's, it's, it's somewhat in the realm of fantasy that I imagine and reimagine these girls, um, even because I don't know them. I don't even know what they look like, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so um, people would say, well, what is going to happen when all the girls are found? Well, I'm like, they're not all going to be found alive. And, and, and even if they were all found alive, that doesn't change the fact that this traumatic thing happened and the historian in me says we need to document this so you have to reimagine all these girls and so if you plan on doing and I was really struck by this all 276 to, to humanize all these girls mm -hmm. that we may never see again mm -hmm. um, number one kind of a trite question how long do you think that would take I, I mean uh, I don't even know if you would have an answer to that because yeah. I understand as an artist it's it's something that you really have to feel in order to yeah. create that particular portrait or uh, in 276, it could be a lifelong project. Yep, the control freak in me wanted this. <laughs> I wanted to have a way to figure this out. Mm. And so I was like, okay, there'll be really, really small drawings. And I started those. They are um, not small drawings. Well, uh, the, the first <laughs> ones I started. <laughs> and then, um, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can time the drawings. And so I did these larger drawings that were 276 minutes long. And I made a game of it. So it's like, I can't spend any more time than this. And, and really cool images came out of that. And then I'm like, but wait, I want to use this. And I want to use that. And I want to paint. And now there's color. And so it's like, it, I am very, I'm very confused. Wow. Yeah. about the project no. <laughs> and what's but what's interesting about it is that um some part of it almost like um you know michelangelo um uh, i'm in no way putting my name in the same sentence no, as michelangelo not. let me just be that clear very clear about that he's one of my heroes all right but but michelangelo would would often say you know that um people would say well this sculpture looks incomplete and how come you didn't finish the face and he was very known for just half a face an eye whatever and he's like oh the 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 marble told me to stop you know, mm -hmm. and so somehow allowing the project itself, the materials to dictate what happens, there is something beautiful about that. And it's not just po poetry. There really is something to be said about allowing the material to say, or the theme or the topic, to, to just kind of let you go um, where it needs to go. So right now, now I'm working on large, colorful images. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this will be for a chapter. But I still got a bunch of black and whites yeah. that I think for a chapter. And I have graphite that I think is for a chapter. And it's going to be a very confusing looking uh, project. But, you know, but the, I think the beauty of it all is, is that um, it's very organic. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the show itself is very organic. Thank it's you. just from the, the, just the black and white of the Ten Little Nigger Girls to the, the dash of colors, beautiful colors. Um, with the Chibok. With the Chibok Girls. Um, but there are also some black and whites in the Chibok series mm -hmm. as well, the mm -hmm. Dryad series. Um, uh, so we're going to really look forward to that. And there's something that's coming up on February 5th at Westfield State University yes. that's a really <laughs> big deal. Um, I don't know how to. this is going to go. It's going to be amazing. I have never done anything like this before, and I am freaking out okay if i can be honest <laughs> what is it i know <laughs> so it is uh so i started doing things on facebook live because it's there and um uh where i do like live paintings and i just you, you can like watch what some of these images just literally there's nothing there and then something there and it's kind of cool like oh my gosh that's so amazing it's, it's not that amazing it's i do this it's like it's really cool it's, it's like okay it's like you do this i this is what i do is fun all right so um and so because I don't have anything else to do with my life right now, I guess. I've decided, <laughs> I've decided, well, okay, the, the truth is, there, there, there's, I, I'm working on the 10 Little Nigger Boys series right now. And 
this series has been particularly difficult for me. The girls were technically difficult to mm-hmm. deal with. This technically, I'm like, I was limited to these materials, charcoal, India ink. I limited myself on purpose. I like playing games like that. Like, no, you can't. You can only work on this for four hours. You can only do it with this and da da da. Force myself to work. The boys, I don't know what I'm doing. And so the boys now have color. They're they're structurally taller. They're six feet tall, seven feet tall. Um, and so there's going to be a piece that I'm going to do on Westfield's campus. It was originally going to be in my studio, but because of some interesting activity that's been happening on my campus as of late, mm-hmm. um, as a black man on my campus, I'm like, no, 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 this is going to happen here. And I, I think it should happen here. And we should have a conversation um, about race and about history, recent history. And so it's going to be a large scale portrait of Trayvon Martin. Um, uh, a case that really just still kind of screws with my mind. I think a million people um, feel it, the same. It just, I just, the kind of rage that I felt l- just watching this case unfold uh, and the things that were said, the things that were said about this boy. Um, Destroying his uh, I just, there's memory. certain things you don't do to people that have died. And 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 my and people and people who profess Christ in particular I'm a Christian man the things that were said the things that were posted and there is this almost like a veil of there's a veil of, of perceived anonymity that you have on social media people your face is there on the icon and everything but there's some way you feel like it's not really me and they just say things the things that were said and I'm imagining his family reading these things and just tearing his character apart. And I didn't see it as any different from, from the, the lynchings of the early 1900s. The idea of the body, even in death, not having sanctuary mm-hmm. and the taking apart of the body. And so I wanted to do, I wanted to deal with the Trayvon Martin case in a special way. And I'm gonna do a live, large portrait of him wearing a crown of cicadas. Um, and it's titled 17 Years Boy. Um, the cicada insect as an, as an allusion to or representation of the amount of time that Trayvon stayed alive on Earth, um, talking about the life cycle of the cicada insect. Its nymph stays underground for six, 17 years, and they come out, and they mate, and you think they should live longer, and that's it. And there's something short-lived about them. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's an expectation of more. And there are even remnants that they existed. Their skins are shed and exoskeletons and whatnot. But the thing is gone. The sounds were there, and now they're gone. Yeah. And there's something about that that, um, that I'm kind of fusing with Trayvon Martin as a way of dealing with him, maybe, maybe in a... In a, in a, maybe in a poetic way, you know, mm-hmm. but um, it's going to be a live portrait and um, it's going to start on February 5th. It's a time based project that will be 17 hours long, um, which I've decided to split up over four days, each day representing a season, um, a season of a year. Mm-hmm. So each hour representing a year right and each day representing a season and so it's a whole installation there's going to be a portrait gallery if everything goes the way i I wanted to (laughs) a portrait gallery of other boys this has happened to it's not a trayvon martin project um it is inspired by him um and really a larger conversation about the ways in which america still sees even in its denial still sees young black men it's a very specific conversation because we can have a conversation about the ways in which america sees black men in general and we can have a conversation about the ways in which and it's a very distinct thing america deals with black women and Mm -hmm. black girls these are very distinct things we tend to see black as monolith and it's like oh those black people slavery ended obama was president damn it (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> and so somehow that's somehow that means when you bring these conversations up that you must be crazy mm-hmm. because big black me you couldn't understand this. I'm telling you that you are you are you are digging into history to rile things up but for for no reason and I'm telling you like I'm I'm telling these people I'm like are you you would have to think I, I never I I hate touting things but Columbia graduate, departmental honors, Yale, PhD, master's, PhD. I, I am the definition of bootstrap pulling, if you want to have that conversation. You know, son of Nigerian immigrants. Let's have this conversation. Why would I be telling you that race is a problem 
if it's not a problem, right. you know? And so I'm hoping that the conversation, I'm hoping that conversations will happen. I'm not looking for everyone to agree with me. I really don't care, it's not my business. My issue is bringing these things up as an historian and as an artist and using the tools that God has given me to create a platform for discussion. And I hope that's what happens. Yeah. I, as a, I've, so two things. So what you were mentioning, you were talking about some current event type stuff that's going on at Westfield that kind of inspired you to be more out there mm -hmm. or outside mm -hmm. with your art. I'd love if you could talk a little bit about that and also curious about your reaction to the, the shithole country's um, remark and kind of how, you seem to be someone who is really just, your art is affected by what you hear and the news that yep. you read. Yep. And I just kind of want, I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't believe that, that we can be very specific. I don't believe that, you know, uh, President Donald Trump's shithole comments about nations in Africa. I mean, he, he may not realize there are other nations. Africa's not a nation, you know. Right. Um, but nations in Africa and Haiti. Um, uh, that his shithole comments are not in, in, in many ways disconnected from the things that are happening not only at Westfield but across a number of colleges in the of United course, States. This is course. not, it's not a, not just a Westfield problem. Right. There is a, there has been a sleeping dragon. Anybody, mm -hmm. uh, you speak to your next nearest black person in education, you know, about whether or not, <laughs> whether or not they're racial structures, racist structures at your school. And, and, be, and, and, and we will roll our eyes. We, our heads hurt we roll our eyes so much. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's all gone. This is wonderful. We're a perfectly liberal school. This is Massachusetts. Come on, yes. stop it. Mm. Stop it. Just stop. It's here. It's at Framingham. It's everywhere. You described and, and, it in and, a conversation I had with you. Yeah. You described it as, as humidity. Uh, yeah. And we described it as like a, a front moving in. Right. Humidity is always it's, there, it's, it's but here. the front moves in. Right, right, and, right. And, and, and the humidity okay. rises. It's just and, the and, weather. Yeah. Right, right. And, and the humidity is high right now. And it's mm. very high. It's very, very high. And it's sticky. And it's tangible. And the students sense it. And they feel it. But it's not disconnected from our president because our president has said things. Words actually matter. Words really do matter. And the, and the people from, from whom the words are said. Um, f f f the people who say these words, that matters too. It matters when when you have um, when you have an election cycle that was that fiery, um, and there was nobody to speak calm to the masses afterwards. Nobody, right. and I, it's not. I don't know if it's that nobody could as much as I don't think that he or anybody in that. I don't think they have the capacity to. Yeah. And, um, and, and so for me, what, what, what has happened on Westfield's campus from racial slurs being written on, on doors, to which I will say, I, I will say our president um, and, um, and, 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 and Westfield State in general has, have done an incredible job addressing the situation. And this is, I mean, it's a hot situation, but I don't know if you can get more direct than, than setting up a podium outside of the hall where it happened at 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning, evacuating said hall and forcing an assembly of those students who were probably still half asleep mm. and dealing with it. I don't know how more direct you can get with it. Mm -hmm. And I think he's, he's leaped over hurdles dealing with this. This is new. There's something that's different in the air right now. And I think people are trying to deal the best that they can, yeah. you know. But this is happening everywhere. Cornell, go just go around, just Absolutely. Google, check Absolutely. the Googles. And so for me, <laughs> check the Googles. So yeah. for me, this this shithole comment, and I say the word. I'm not someone who likes to casually curse, um, but I say the word because our president said it. I, we are in a place now where we have to take our hands and shield our children's ears mm -hmm. when he gives public when he gives speeches I, this is ridiculous what's it the the state of the union address is about to get how many earplugs do we need to put in our children's yeah. ears we right. we had i mean you're talking about words matter we had a pretty we had a discussion about you know we put the word shithole on the cover of the mm -hmm. valley advocate and we didn't do that lightly mm -hmm. um that was uh i that just what you're saying about these words and how the president is really setting the tone on this, it almost seems like we're apologizing for him, for, for, to our readers, for mm -hmm. our president, and I don't think he really deserves that kind of apology from us. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you, and I don't believe in the, um, I don't, I, it's as difficult as it, I, okay, so is there, let me make a point, make a point, make, a, make any point. 
is there a bridge too far? Are there are there news me- news outlets that just because he said it, well, we're reporting it, and all day the next day, it's like it was a reason to use this language, very mm. colorful language. On it. yes, there is that. There mm-hmm. is that. Let's not play with each other. We know that happens as well. But I think I think somehow bleeping out, mm-hmm. it's not so different from the whole idea of. Um, you know, with my, my show, these things sure. are all connected, right? Ten Absolutely. Little Nigger yeah. Girls. Yeah. You know, yeah. that is Absolutely. the title of this series. But we're very uncomfortable with that word. But that word exists. It exists. We're still having battles about this word. Mm-hmm. And that word existed in history. And at least I'm doing you the favor of editing it with the cross with the through. Cross. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So it's not so different. Why are we editing? Why do we edit what has happened? And in so many ways, America wants to say or tout that it's, be, it, it's, it's somehow better than China or North Korea, right? Absolutely. And I'm not saying that we aren't. But if we are, one of the first things we should be doing is dealing with our history in accurate terms and not obliterating it and not whitewashing it, forget the word, and, and not um, trying to erase portions of history, um, sanitizing our history. Like, well, the way I remember it, no, the, no. Way, the way it was, oh, well, I always loved Muhammad Ali. No, you didn't. No. <laughs> oh, no. you did. Come on. Well, I think that's a natural, um, yeah. I don't know, not for me and not for me, most people that I know, but it tends to be a natural uh, convention for people to want to make things better, seem better than they were. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you think about Roy Moore and when he said that, he, you know, back in the old days, life was great because even when there was slavery, there was families and they took care of each other. <sighs> Make America great again. Make America great wow, again. So it's, wow. this, it's this need, this, this desire to not have to face what is real in terms of race because we were built on slavery. Wow. It was built, this country was built on the backs of slaves and then to have to live side by side it doesn't go away. It's a generational thing. People think kids, oh, millennials are so much better now. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily because they're learning from generation to generation to generation from, from their parents, from their grandparents, and from the media. Because all you have to do is look at anything on television. You're not going to see too many brown faces. All right. So people, I always think that, you know, people are like, oh, we've crossed so many barriers. And, and it's like all you have to do is walk out your door. Walk into a boardroom, walk into a classroom, walk into a news outlet, walk into anywhere. It's right there. It's 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 right, right there. there. So this this whitewashing of history, it seems very natural to me. I studied history. It seems very natural. The way that we were taught history, even through graduate school, mm-hmm. it's it's the social it's the social his social history at that point in time was an addendum. All that really mattered was wars and government. So. You know, wow. Um, wow. so I so I, I I understand completely what you're saying. You know, it, it's it, I don't prefer I prefer not to say the whole because right. that's just yep. me. Yeah, right. You know, and we were talking about you know, but but it's not it's not <clears throat> an excuse for me. It's not an excuse yeah. to him. Yep. Yeah. For him, rather, mm-hmm. um, it's it's just that I don't see. I don't it, see. I don't see it as I don't fault anybody for 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 opting not. It's and an I don't fault anybody yeah. for saying it. Yeah. I'm kind of like. Yeah, it it's it's it's, it's I was it's worried real. about sharing the article, mm-hmm. you know, because it's <laughs> thank thank you so much that my picture is the first one that shows up, but <laughs> it's like it's like my face and then chill. I'm like, oh, this is this is <laughs> my mom and my dad are gonna be very proud. Thank you, yeah. thank you, mom and dad. You know what I mean? Right? No, but it's just it's just something that. They, but this is again, but this is where we are. This is yeah. where we yeah. are. This is where we are. We are here. You and know, we've always been here. Right. It's just the humidity has risen. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I was glad that, you know, you chose to be part of the story and that, and that yeah. you found, all uh, uh, you know, some great people. We both worked on it. But, um, you know, I, I think that uh, kind of highlighting the positives is kind of a way to um, to fight against that kind Absolutely. of tide of, of history and racism and, and just mm-hmm. to show yeah. how important all members of the community are. And bringing people, you know, and focusing on people who, who are um, – whose families have immigrated or themselves, they've immigrated um, – to say, you know, one of the things that stood out to me that the people that I that participated in my interviews w- was that this is a country of immigrants. Mm. This is a country of immigrants. And even even if you're an Italian American, your your people suffered because of other people's yeah. prejudice. Mm-hmm. Right. Irish Americans, German Americans. It, it, it just it's just so fascinating to me. But we yeah. can't seem to move past this black and white issue. No. 
we can't seem no. to get past it. No, and it's it's dividing. It's it's it it's, it's it's dividing. It's fascinating. I I don't uh, without mentioning anything about. I, I won't go too deep about you know where I worship and everything else. But this is it's it is just fascinating mm -hmm. um, to kind of watch things in real time um, to <coughs> realize that some of these very ideas that are reprehensible you know, are among people yeah. who, you who know, profess you, Christ. who profess Christ or who <coughs> raise hands up in the church. You're dead next to, it's very, it's scary and mm -hmm. um, it's worrisome. And so when you go from church to, to school, school starts and you're bombarded with it, you know, what do you do? I was given the gift of art to interpret it, but more so to create it. And so I'm, I'm hoping that with the, the little bit that I can do, I, I will not impact policy. There's nothing that I'm going to do that's going to, I'm not a politician, and I really don't want to be. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't envy them. But, but there's nothing that I will do that will impact policy. But if we can start having more conversations like this, I mean, the more we start, stop erasing and start kind of yeah. addressing, yeah. I, I think that this does amount for healing. And the last thing I'll say about this is um, uh, one of my students on campus uh, spoke to me. She interviewed me, too, uh, for a paper she was writing, criminal justice student. She's like, I didn't know about Colin Kaepernick and all this other stuff. And mm, I just wanted your yeah. ideas. And this little white girl, she's so cute. And, and she was like, <laughs> and, she, and we're talking, but she was a sweetheart, you know, and we we're talking. And, and, and she's like, well, how do you think this ends? What should we do? Mm. And I was like, I, because she was telling me how she went to one of the rallies and, and you know, there were black people there, but they were really angry. And they're like, you white people this. And, and, and I was like, mm -hmm. well, these black people are terrified right now because they have things written on their door. Right. This is like freaking 18, 1800s here, right. you know, and it's scary for black students now. And I told her, I think we all need a little bit of grace. We all need to offer just a little more grace. It's not something you hear any of the news outlets talking about Fox to MSNBC. Nobody talks about grace, mm -hmm. about the idea that you have to give a little um, in terms of space and room for people to make mistakes, um, for them to give you a little for the same, you know? And I'm just hoping that the project I'm working on on Westfield's campus between February 5th and 8th um, um, will offer not just a platform, but the possibility of grace. I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to see it. Well, maybe we'll just leave it there. And so, yeah, that's that's great. So thank you so much thank for, you thank so you. for thank coming you. in. Thank yeah. you. This was a lot of fun, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. It was we'll fun. decide later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com.